how's it, Mr. Mzanzi? Welcome back to another episode of Morgs Brew. You're here with me on the roof, and today we're going to be talking about rainwater harvesting in South Africa. Sleep, but far When you're out there collecting your own rainfall data, it's gonna you're gonna have to do that using a rain gauge, something something like this. This is a millimeter rain gauge. It's a conical flask. The rainwater collects up in the top here. To be able to calculate the amount of water you can catch, you just need to know the length and the width of available roof that you've got and the type of roof structures that you're using. So I'm using two roof structures, the both the one that I built and the tile roof structure behind me that I could be collecting off of. The one half of the tile roof structure has got the cutter that directs the water straight onto these corrugated sheetings or the IBR which then directs it down into the bottom gutters and we moved this gutter on this side to the end over there so that we could end up recycling it instead of having to buy a new one. It just took a bit of tinkering in the patchwork on the old downpipes. To show you what a meter looks like, because I know there's probably a few guys out there trying to figure that out, that is roughly waist height. So you're going to measure it like this. If you take one meter, we'll put a mark over here, just so you guys can all see, and then we go one meter this way. And now, by one meter, by one millimeter, which is, which is like that, is equal to one liter. Now obviously, the amount of rainfall that gets to the end source is going to differ between the different landscapes that you move across. For example, a solid roof is going to give you a lot more water flow off than a planted landscape like that. Once you've managed to channel all your water into your gutters and towards your collection system, you want to avoid getting any organic material into your tanks. Organic material is going to contaminate the water with time. Now this doesn't mean it's going to kill you. It just means that it's not going to be ideal to keep drinking or using this water within your pipes in the house. So it's a very easy solution to keeping organic material out and that's to create some kind of a leaf gobbler or leaf flush type system. You can make your own ones or you can use a stock standard off the shelf. I got mine that works pretty well and you'll see here a little video of it working from the rotor tank that I bought and the first flush system with that tank. There's likely going to be a time period between rainfall events and in those time periods you're going to get a deposit of stuff that's going to end up on your roof. Now this is going to be a combination of birds, poo, insects, insect skeletons, insect poo, microbes, fungi, algae, uh, amoebas, microarthropods, chemicals from nearby agriculture systems, dust from soil erosion. You know, there's an endless list of things that are going to end up on your roof surface. But the first bit of rain is likely going to flush the majority of that stuff, at least what's going to move off of the roof. So the solution to allowing that to get off your roof is to create a first flush system. A first flush system is basically a reservoir or a cistern or some kind of a tank pre-storage where the first bit of water that, enter, that hits the roof and is collected is diverted as a waste system. comes down here into your leaf gobbler and you can see how that's working already it's already got a whole lot of leaves on here that you can periodically come in and remove this cover and empty those leaves then the first flush tank is this puppy that I'm hugging over here um, the water goes in through the leaf gobbler over there and then comes out this side here and along the roof now I said that uh, this fills up first if 
before water goes out. I don't know if you can see in there, I've actually put a pipe inside here that's got holes in the side and a bit of shade cloth wrapped up inside of it as a second stage filtration that I'm using to try and avoid any organic material going from this first flush system through to my storage tanks down there. Once the water reaches the overflow level of this cistern over here, it travels down this pipe, which is just off gradient, comes around the 90 and along here into a hole that I've drilled in the side of the roto tank. Last night we had a bit of rain and uh, I was standing down here with my phone to the edge over here, listening to the sound of that water trickling in. This rainwater system here is plumbed up as a backup to our municipal water, which already has a backup tank. The water leaves your tank at the bottom most level and comes directly into a pressure pump or a little pump over here with a pressure hat on top of it. This line is a one-way valve on it to stop water going back into the pipe. This little machine over here pressurizes the water and sends it into the house. Now, if you were wanting to use your rainwater, the water comes out over here. What you would do with this is set up a three-stage filtration system, where stage one over here, you have got your solids removal. Stage two is going to be a finer solids removal. And then stage three, finally, will be your carbon filter. 84 square meters. Over the lifetime of my 365 days at roughly 1,300 millimeters per year means that I'm going to be able to collect at an efficiency of 90%, 1,300 times my 84 square meters is equal to that times 0.9 so i'm able to capture 98,280 liters per year it's roughly 8,190 liters a month is what i'm able to capture we're using these two locally available tanks one of them is a jojo tank one of them is a roto tank now the jojo is found nationally i think the roto tank is also national now but they're originally based from kwazulu natal and i've got them next to each other i'm quite keen to see which one does better so guys a little slight competition happening there but uh, maybe in a few years time i'll have a better answer and we'll be able to figure out which one of these guys does a better job at storing water Although it's not essential, but it's quite nice to decorate some of the system. And uh, to do that, we've just used some spec worm. There seems to be a crazy spec worm craze in South Africa at the moment, but this is one of our plants that we've had, or well, I've been dragging around with me for the last eight years. Uh, first came from Eastern Cape near Adelaide, went to Grahamstown, then ended up in Cape Town, and now I was here in KwaZulu Natal. And I just keep taking cuttings of those same plants that I drag around everywhere with me. So it's like my little spec worm family over here. Remember now we have a seasonal rainfall where our rainfall pattern will do this where these are our summer months and these are our winter months and because of this we're going to get the bulk of our rainfall in the summer months which means we're not really going to get that 8,100 liters a month. We're likely going to get most of it in the summertime which means we need to be able to store enough to get us through this little gap in the winter here. Just going to quickly come onto this shiny app that I built with our help with a friend of mine uh, who's currently doing his postdoc in America somewhere. He is a data whiz. Thanks, Rob, for all your help with this. But you can see we have a variable data set which spans from roughly 500 millimeters at the lowest point in the 20s and 30s and again somewhere 600 mils in the 80s right up to the highest recorded rainfall which was 2012 of 2100 millimeters and well that sort of sums up the way in which we're capturing rainwater on our site and i hope that i've been able to detail it in such a way that you can use our methodology and apply it within your own system i've tried to give you the formula you need to work out the area of your roof the volumes of water that you can get how to figure out what sort of water you're looking at over a year and then 
you need to work out what is your intended end usage for that. Do you want to put it into your house? Because if you want to put it into your house, you need to go the whole nine yards with the filtration. You don't want to skimp on that. You know, we've been drinking water, rainwater for thousands of years, but as time's gone on, there have been more and more complex things that start to happen around us. Like we've got a lot more cars on the road, airplanes in the sky, agricultural crops doing what they do, burning, soil erosion, depositing of stuff all over the place things like this virus that's spreading around the world which might make you want to collect rainwater uh, it'd probably be a very good idea for everybody to have their own source of water so that when we do have water source shortages or issues we're able to use our own supply and become independent of our governments and if you've liked this content please hit the like button it goes a long way in bumping up some of these videos Subscribe to my channel if you want to see some more things. I've been away for a while, but I'm back now with some motivation and some new skills that we've learned. Um, if you have any comments or any questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And also, if you're interested in how I built this roof structure that's above me, definitely put that in the comment section below and I'll put together a video on how we did that. So thanks again for joining me. And uh, I'll see you next time for another brew. Peace.